Now we're gonna learn in this video how to convert complex numbers from rectangular to polar form, and then we'll start with polar form and convert them back into rectangular form. And so we introduced the modulus in my last video, which is like the absolute value, or kind of like the distance from the origin on the complex plane. I used in my last video A comma B a lot, but we could just use X comma Y as well. Like for example, I said in the last video, I think we did negative four plus three I, and we plotted that on the complex plane. And on my real axis, we would move four to the left. And on my imaginary axis, we'd move up three. And that was our modulus. It was like this distance from the origin to that point. Now, what I want you to recognize is that's a lot like the radius or R in polar form. So I want you to think of that modulus that we just found as the radius. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the form that our complex numbers take when we write them in polar form. And I'll kind of show you how we get there. So we started with our complex values taking the form of A plus BI. But as I just stated, instead of A and B, we can use X for horizontal and Y for vertical. Now, if you remember this from your polar functions unit, we know that X can be represented as R cosine theta. And then Y can be represented as R sine theta. And then I have the I. So this Y got substituted out for R sine theta and the X got substituted out for R cosine theta. Well, now we see that we have these two terms separated, separated by the addition sign, and I can factor an R out of both of those. So we have Z equals R cosine theta plus I sine theta. I factored the R out of both of those, and then I just wrote the I as a leading coefficient for sine theta. This R is our modulus, and then theta we call the argument. Since they're always gonna take this form, sometimes instead of writing cosine theta plus I sine theta, you'll see it abbreviated as R cis theta. Okay, now let's look at some examples. Okay, what we're about to do is we're about to convert this complex number to its polar form, and I've copied that down from the previous slide. So what we need to identify first is let's identify our A value and our B value. So for this particular problem, we know that complex numbers take the form of A plus B I. I'll sometimes refer to it as X plus y i but our a value for this particular one is zero it doesn't have a real number this doesn't say three plus four i or eight plus four i the a value is zero and then our b value is four so if i wanted to find the modulus remember the r value that's like our modulus what we learned how to do is we learned how to do a squared plus b squared so for this particular one zero squared is zero four squared is 16 our R value is going to be four. From here, we know our R value, we really just need our theta in order to write our point in its polar form. In order to understand this, I'm gonna draw a little coordinate plane. And what we have is if this is my real axis and this is my imaginary axis. Remember, we had no real component, we just had the imaginary component of four. So there is how I'd plot this point on a complex plane. And so you might be saying, Oh, well, in that case, our theta is going to be pi over 2 or 90 degrees. If it wasn't so obvious, your way that you would find theta is you're going to do tan inverse of the B value over the A value, or in other words, of the vertical component over the horizontal component, of the imaginary component over the real component, or of the Y over the X, however you want to think of that. And so we would normally just substitute our B value in here and our A value in here. But since our A is zero, we're going to have an undefined value. The calculator won't spit that out for us. So this is, this is one of the exceptions because tangent is undefined at 90 degrees or at pi over two. But basically our theta here is going to be pi over two. So we found R, we found theta. Now we're ready to write our complex number in polar form. So if I come up here, it's going to be that our complex number is equal to our radius, then cosine of pi over two plus I sine pi over two. Since cosine of pi over two is zero, you could leave that part out and just leave it as Z equals four times I sine pi over two. Okay, on our next problem, we have both a real component and an imaginary component. So it's gonna be very much like the last problem. To find our R value, that's just the same thing as the modulus. So we are going to take the square root of that real component squared plus that imaginary component squared, or in this case, that's gonna be negative two squared plus three squared. 
And that's gonna be the square root of 13. I'm just gonna leave it as that for now. Then we need to find our argument or our theta. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 10 inverse of the imaginary component over the real component. And whenever I punch that into my calculator, I get roughly negative 56 degrees. I'm just gonna go in degrees for this one. Now, the negative 56, I'm gonna go ahead and convert that because if we went to the left two and up three, we need a second quadrant angle. And so if we picture this, if we went to the left two on my real axis and we went up three on my imaginary axis, that's where our point's gonna be. There's our modulus of the square root of 13, but our angle should be an angle that puts us in the second quadrant. So instead of negative 56, I would use 56 as my reference angle to get that the angle we want is actually 124 degrees. Now that I know my R, now that I know my theta, we are ready to write our complex number in polar form. I'll do it up here in purple. Z equals the square root of 13 times cosine of 124 plus I sine 124. Or if we wanted to write it in that abbreviated form that I referenced earlier, it's going to be R cis theta. Now that we've looked at complex numbers in polar form, let's try to convert them back into rectangular forms. So if I begin with the polar form, can we convert them back to rectangular form? So I'm going to start with my R value and let's go ahead and distribute it in. So we have five cosine of pi over six plus five I five sine of pi over six. So I've, all I've done is I've distributed that R value into the parentheses. And now you might be wondering, why did you include a unit circle here? Well, because these are unit circle values, and it's going to be easy to evaluate these. Our next step is going to be to evaluate these cosine functions. The cosine of pi, pi over 6 is going to be root 3 over 2. That's the x coordinate right there. Plus i, 5, and the sine of pi over 6, the sine of that same angle is 1 half. So we can simplify. We're going to have 5 root 3 over 2 would be our real component. And then i times 5 over 2 would be our imaginary component. So this is the rectangular form of the complex number. Not, not super pretty, but that's like your a value and that's like your b value right there. Let's do one last example. Well, this last example, I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own. But it's going to be same song, different verse. I'm going to start by distributing that negative 2. And then I'm going to use my unit circle to evaluate cosine of 7 pi over 6 and the sine of 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 is right there, so the cosine is going to be negative root 3 over 2. And the sine is going to be negative 1 half. If I simplify each of these, the negative times the negative is a positive and our 2's cancel, so we're left with root 3 is going to be your real component. And then your imaginary component, negative times the negative is a positive, the twos cancel, you're gonna have a vertical component right there. And so there is how to convert from polar form back to rectangular form.